Hello, uh, it is a real pleasure to participate in this conference for Better Future for Healthy of Healthy Aging 2020, organized by the government of the Republic of Croatia within the European Union. And I'm going to speak about uh, the, the issue of can the health system be better organized to meet the challenge of chronic diseases and aging disorders? As an introduction, I would like to, to speak about some issues to defy, to question the status quo. First, are our, uh, our health systems prepared to meet the current challenges of chronic and age-related diseases? Second, has the COVID-19 pandemic shown that we have a good connection between the social and the health dimension, especially for the care of people suffering from chronic conditions? And then are the current nursing home models, the residences, uh, the institutionalized models adequate in many of our countries? The background summary that I wanted to share with you is, uh, is, is clear. It is time to recognize how complex it is and will be for Europe to deal with one of the highest rates of aging and chronicity in the world nor to change the trend that confirms that around 90% of mortality in our country uh, and countries is due to chronic diseases. And it won't be easy to care for the growing number of Europeans with senile dementia, including Alzheimer's disease, or even to halt the epidemic situation of, for example, obesity in adults and children, which will mean even more diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. If we could focus on financing a scenario of inertia due to inaction projects that the health budget will have to grow, uh, the, the growth of this budget will be around 50% by 2025 in order to meet the demand of care, which does not seem bearable for our economies. It's a lot. So in short, we face more chronic diseases and this generally cannot be prevented by vaccines or cured by medication, nor do they just disappear. They are there to stay, to be with us. So all this will impose greater stresses on the sustainability of health systems. So for everything above, there is a need for an orderly transformation of the care model that makes the sustainability of our health system possible. Then I would like to move to, uh, to asking a question. Has this need be, been transformed into action? And I would have to say that although the need to meet the challenge of chronicity is well understood by most colleagues in Europe, there seems to be lack of energy, lack of determination to make something really effective to improve the situation. In fact, in the context of the economic crisis, health systems have been managed with a multitude of actions to cut spending in a linear fashion, but without any real willingness to lead the necessary transformation of the health systems to focus on the management of chronic patients. And this is despite the fact that the transformation of the model is the only way to generate potential savings and improve quality in the health system. Uh, well, which are the possible reasons for inaction in this field? One of the main reasons for the lack of transformative leadership is the current paradigm of what medicine is, which is focused on rescue, on the acute, on attending to the specific episode. And in fact, medical schools explain this and practices, for example, are carried out in huge, super specialized third level hospitals. In addition, there is a political logic uh, within the, the, the dimension that we are addressing here. Political leaders have fallen into this logic of immediacy by rescuing health care. They deal almost exclusively with acute health problems, the short-term issues, moving from one crisis to another without thinking about the chronic structural problems of the system that require a transformation. The COVID-19 crisis once again has shown that it's still necessary a clinical care model for acute patients. No doubt about that. We need intensive care units within the specialists, but this should be complemented with a model more in line with the care of chronicity. 
and it is therefore necessary to complement a policy or management of health rescue with a management of a mid-term transformation in order to make this possible. And how can this be achieved? How to achieve a good performance within the system? To effectively transform the care model and manage the chronically ill more efficiently, uh, we already have a lot of experiences. There are numerous examples in Europe with positive results in terms of potential for improving quality and sustainability. I would like to mention, for example, in the country in Ovest, in Spain, the Telville study carried out with the framework of the Basque's chronic care strategy, uh, which shows that a model of telemonitoring of complex chronic conditions from primary care onwards achieves a substantial reduction in hospital admission and stays. Uh, on the other hand, in Sweden, the county of Linköping systematically achieves better health outcomes and efficiency than other counties thanks to this type of intervention. But we need to take into account the different stakeholders, shareholders, the ingredients in order to make this possible. And I would like to start by the importance of involvement of health professionals. Because the examples of good results cited before are not only a technological achievement, have been achieved through the active participation of health professionals. The more health professionals are involved in management or organizational issues, the better the quality and efficiency results obtained in an organization. The literature on the involvement of health professionals that are not only medical doctors, are also nurses, pharmacists, etc. The, the, the literature, I mean, confirms that it is no longer sufficient for clinicians to be excellent clinicians, but they also need to be excellent or at least good managers. Active participation in management and organization is necessary to achieve good results. And in fact, the Association of Schools of Public Health in the European region, ASFER, may and should help preparing health system professionals to be better prepared. Um, and how to complementarily lead this transformation? Well, I would like to, to quote here Ludwig von Bertalanffy, who uh, formulated within his general system theory, very well known, that there is an important principle to keep in mind. And this principle is called equifinality, according which a given end state can be reached by many potential means. There are different ways to go from A to B. But the current fragmented model, the current one, does not provide the quality, the clinical safety, and the results expected, especially for chronic patients. And it is increasingly understood that better management of these patients is not only a clinical challenge, but also an organizational and management challenge. Then we have to involve and engage patients to lead this transformation. We must use tools to turn passive patients into active patients. And these tools are already well known. It's critical to have good health literacy because knowledge creates health. And this battery of tools allows the care model to be organized in a different way. The key will be to implement them in an aligned way. With all of this in mind, which are the resources to lead the necessary reform of the health system? Uh, once again, introducing new professional roles for case management. I would say that obviously transforming passive patients into active patients, then articulating integrated car care pathways, and introducing technologies that allow for the provision of services at a distance. So the e-health, m-health, and all related technologies. Incentives and disincentives to reduce hospital admission and readmission should also be introduced there. Moreover, we have more resources, like identifying new forms of stratification of the population by risk. This is well known in many of our countries already. 
this allows better targeting of preventive or care interventions. So we know exactly uh, who does what and, and in which group. Then establishing new clinical decision support systems. And finally, incorporating new forms of recruitment aimed at contracting value rather than just activity. Uh, with all of this in mind, I would like to mention the importance of integrating the different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. In this case, primary care, public health, social care, and health care. So moving towards a single tile social and health service is important in order to be supported by the universal health coverage, where access is based on need under the equity principle. With good integration of social care and healthcare services, many of our countries have seen during this COVID-19 pandemic the need to better articulate the support of the healthcare system to the nursing homes, to the residences for the elderly and the disabled, which mainly provided social support until now, not much else. And that has been a, a dramatic case in some of our countries, and particularly in the, in the one that I know best. And then and we need also to strengthen primary health care. I mentioned incorporating most of the portfolio of the preventive medicine and public health services. So wrapping up, I would like to say that we need to transform healthcare to offer more quality to the chronically ill. And in conclusion, we know that there are effective resources and procedures which may allow us to transform healthcare to offer more quality to the chronically ill while making it at the same time more sustainable. To achieve both objectives, it now seems more logical to transform rather than cut. So the question is rationalization or rationing? What is the way out of the crisis? So, and I would like to say like the song, the answer my friend is blowing in the wind. We need to rationalize, not rationing. Uh, we need to actually think in a logical way. We need to base on primary health, on public health, doing all the efforts by the society to protect health, to prevent diseases, to promote health, and at the same time, having well-established health systems, well-prepared to actually tackle the challenge of chronicity for the best of the society. It has been a real pleasure. I would like to say thank you so much. Kuala Bam. And I look forward to a very fruitful conference on better future of healthy aging 2020.